part is uh, welcome to the IETF, obviously. Um, the first thing that you will see, and when you register for an IETF meeting uh, and at every IETF meeting uh, afterwards is the IETF note well. And this is basically all of our policies and all of our rules. Um, and so by participating in the IETF, you agree to follow these uh, IETF processes and policies. By the end of a, a week of working group meetings, uh, you will have seen this uh, several times. Um, it's the, you know, the high level rules. And then in addition to that, it's a set of um, BCPs or, or uh, IETF documents that specify our processes, our code of conduct, our harassment procedures, copyrights, all of those kinds of things. Um, this, um, this presentation will obviously not go into detail on what those things are, uh, but feel free to ask uh, any of the leadership or any questions and, and they'll be happy to answer those. So um, before we even get started with the rest of the presentation, I want to highlight uh, the newcomer activities that are coming up for IETF 110. Um, <clears throat> we have the tutorial webinars, uh, which was we did one on Tuesday morning, my time, and a second one on, uh, well, it's, a, it's Thursday evening, my time. It's Friday midnight for um, UTC. Um, we are doing what we're calling this time newcomers ask me anything. Uh, as we've moved into um, virtual meetings, we've, we've really struggled. We normally have a series of newcomer events in a face-to-face -face meeting where people get a chance to, to meet and talk to each other and, and get you know sort of some uh, quick tidbits or things like that. Um, so what we've done is we've set up a couple uh, ask me anything sessions. These will be in a space that uh, we call gather. Uh, and there'll be more, I'll talk a little bit more about Gather later on, uh, but these are meant to be very informal. So, you know, I'll be there, Rich will probably be there. Um, and, um, and, you know, there may be a few other people there who stop by, ask us anything, uh, you know, tell us how you like the virtual coffee or, you know, whatever. Um, the third thing that we're having this time is the IETF guides. Uh, and this is uh, sort of like a lightweight mentoring program where you get matched, you fill out a profile and you get matched with somebody that has some of the same interests um, that you might have in the IETF, uh, that's a more senior level IETF person and they can provide you guidance. Um, and it, I think it's it, I would strongly recommend it if you're interested at all in, in uh, talking to a senior level person. Um, so the scope of this presentation is specifically preparing for an IETF meeting. Um, and it, it is really targeted to try and provide you the, the information that helps you get started uh, and strategies to make the most of the meeting. And it's not going to be the history or details on how to write a standard or, or many other things that you might ask questions about. It's really supposed to give you a starting point. Um, so going from there, I'm gonna do, this, is, this presentation is divided into three sections. One is sort of the IETF and its organizations. And then the second one is uh, the meeting in a nutshell. And that's what the, the part Rich is going to do. He's gonna talk about all the various pieces of the meeting and how they all fit together. And then the third part of it is sort of the resources and the tools and the people. Uh, so it'll be, um, you know, where you go for various pieces of information, what tools you use and those kinds of things. Um, so first of all, uh, the mission of the IETF is really about making the internet work better. Um, the IETF is the standards organization uh, responsible for all of the internet protocol based standards. Um, and it's our mission to produce high quality relevant technical documents that influence the way people design, use, and manage the internet. So it is a standards development organization. I don't know if you are at all familiar with other standards development organizations or you participated in any of those, uh, you know, like IEEE, uh, ITUT, um, you know, global ones, there's also regional ones, uh, and then there's also consortium type standards organizations. Um, so we are officially a standards development organization. Um, we have self-selected individual participants and no formal membership. So you don't join the IETF uh, to, um, you know, by paying dues or by being uh, a member of something or, or because you belong to a certain government. It's self-selected individuals. You know, often these individuals are supported uh, in their work by their companies, but their companies don't get any more standing than if the individual has. Uh, we don't do any formal voting. We have a consensus process, and I'll talk a lot more about the consensus process later. Um, 
and so this is the, but we do hum, and hum is a technique we use to measure consensus. Uh, but uh, you know, there, there's no formally recorded voting um, in, in this context. There's also no formal government role. That doesn't mean that governments don't participate. What it means is that they don't have a specific role because they are a government. Uh, so uh, individuals from government agencies participate in various work in the IETF, just like any other individual participant. And there are a number of them from you know, a number of different governments that are very active in various working groups. Um, the IETF is all about trying to, is really based on market-based adoption. So um, the idea is that a real standard is one that people actually use. Um, and so we're really trying to focus on what, what might actually get deployed, what's gonna get some adoption in the marketplace. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we are focused on internet technologies. And, and the final thing is uh, we are bottom up uh, in a sense that uh, people bring in proposals and then working, work is created based on the proposals that come to the table. Um, it's not like you develop a plan um, that's handed down and says, okay, these are the things that we need people to develop the pieces to. So it's very much what we have contributions on, what we have um, members that are willing to work on is, is what actually gets done. Um, and by the way, stop me at any time or wave since I can, we can see each other and, and ask questions. Um, so the IETF is divided up into seven areas. Uh, each of these areas is um, responsible for a body of, of work in the IETF. Uh, the applications in real-time area uh, does all of like the voice over IP protocols, um, real-time communications, non-real-time communications, uh, you know, mail, those kinds of things would all fall into that area. The uh, transport area covers mechanisms related to you know, data transport on the internet. Uh, it includes mechanisms like congestion control and it includes the protocols. So TCP, IP uh, and the emerging quick protocol are all done in the transport area. Uh, the routing area uh, does routing and signaling. So it does a BGP, it does the MPLS based standards. It does a number of things like that. The internet area primarily does IPv4 and IPv6. It also does mapping, historically has done mappings of IPv4 and IPv6 over specific uh, layer two technologies. Uh, it does DHCP, DNS, NTP. Uh, it does sort of that layer of infrastructure type of standards. Uh, operations and management does all of the network management standards in the ITF. So it does YANG, um, YANG modules, uh, NetConf, those kinds of things. It also handles a lot of the, the operations areas. So often when you have a standard that has really reached maturity and it's being um, deployed a lot and a lot of the questions around it have to do with operational issues, uh, then there might be an operations working group set up. So like uh, V6 ops, for example, uh, does V6 operations types of things. And finally, the security area does security protocols and mechanisms and that kind of you know, has its fingers in all of the areas. Uh, but this is where you see the work, for example, done on TLS um, and the work done on IPsec and a number of other things like that. Um, and finally, there's a general area. And the general area is really a little bit more about activities that are focused on supporting and updating IETF processes um, and uh, general topics that go across the whole IETF. Um, a little bit later, when we talk about the data tracker, uh, there's a way to go into the data tracker and see which working groups are active for each area. And that might be something that would be of, of use to you. <clears throat> so then I mentioned the IETF and consensus. Uh, there is an old IETF mantra that uh, dates from the beginnings of the IETF that says we reject kings, presidents and voting. We believe in rough consensus and running code. And people often wonder a little bit about what that actually means. So rough consensus is achieved when all the issues are addressed, but they're not necessarily accommodated. So what this really means is that everybody has a chance to say their piece, but we don't have to have uni unanimity in order to, to move forward. So it, we you, dissenting opinions are given an opportunity to be heard, but they, they may not necessarily control the outcome. Um, and this is a, a way of saying, you know, when, when you get to a point where it, it it's, it's good enough, 
or, you know, like 80%, 90% feel that this is the right way to go. And there's still these 10% that are vehemently opposed. At some point, you need to make a decision and go forward. Um, humming is a way to measure consensus that's not voting. Um, and part of the reason for this is if you think about it, when you vote, it's, 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 it's sort of black and white. You're either for it or against it. So it's really hard to measure. Well, you know, I could go either way, but I kind of support it versus, you know, I strongly believe this to be the case. So if you're in a working group and a working group chair um, asks for consensus and, and does a hum, you know, you might hear people humming really loudly, or you might just hear this sort of a soft hum. And that's, it's a way when you add it all up to give you a, you know, a, a measure of both the level of passion and also the general feeling of the room. Um, the session chair um, is responsible for building the consensus uh, and then for measuring the consensus and determining it at the end. Um, at the end of the day, all work in the IETF is done on, the, on a mailing list. And so you still need to go back to the mailing list uh, and confirm any consensus calls or confirm any decisions that are made in the working group meeting. Um, but as with many things, if you think about it, um, you know, if, uh, you know, face to face or a, a real time meeting is a really good way to sort of break roadblocks and, and move forward. Um, you know. And so that's that's really what a lot of your working group time will be de dedicated to. There is a whole um, RFC on consensus and humming in the IETF if you want to learn more about it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> So this is a little bit about the organization um, of the IETF. Um, so earlier I was talking about areas. And so those are the dark, darker blue circles that are inside the lighter blue. Uh, and so each area is made up of a number of working groups and all of those working groups are organized into an area. And each area has two or three people that manage that area. So, you know, as a working group chair, um, you know, I, I have a, a, a boss who's, who's my area director and he's the one who, you know, manages our, the set of working groups under his control. And then that set of people that manage the areas, they make up the IESG, so the Internet Engineering Steering Group. is this group of basically working group managers that are collected together to form the leadership body of the IETF. Um, on the research side, we also have a research task force. And so, a lot of things that are not yet mature enough to be standardized or areas that are, uh, you know, something like the, the human, human rights protocol considerations research group. These are the kinds of things that would be, um, there's the global internet access for all research group. Um, these are not really working groups in the sense that they're not gonna produce standards documents. They are all organized into the IRTF or the Internet Research Task Force. And it also has a body of people that manage it. Uh, and that it is made up more of people that are invited to be part of that steering group. Uh, in red, oh, so the research group is the pink. Uh, the red that you see there is an internet architecture board. Um, and this is the body that does a lot of the policies for the IETF and also manages all the external liaisons and looks at overarching issues for the community. Um, the IETF LLC, which is the black, this is the administrative part of the IETF. And so it's the one that manages all the contracts uh, and handles um, resourcing issues associated with the IETF, you know, the developing our tools and all of those kinds of things. They are the business side of the IETF. Um, the green and the yellow, the RFC editor and the IANA, they are uh, organizations that have sort of dotted lines to the IETF because they help us get our work done. The RFC editor is, is the publishing branch of the IETF. It publishes our standards. And IANA is the internet assigned names and numbers. Um, and they manage the protocol numbers. So if you're developing a protocol and you need some port numbers, you set up a registry. Uh, and they're the ones that manage the assignment of those. So what I really should do is take out this next slide because every time I do this, I get to the next slide and I'm like, I've just said all of that. So, um, but this is basically then spelled out in a little bit more of who does what. So anyway, at this point, I'm gonna hand it over to Rich and he's gonna talk about what you will see at an IETF week. 
Okay. Uh, thanks, Karen. Um, and I'll just say next page, like now, next page. <laughs> All right, so this says an IETF meeting week in person, um, but a lot of it is also holds for the virtual meetings. Um, there are about 130 working groups. And at any given point, um, you know, a subset of the meet face-to-face, -face, we usually have three face-to-face -face meetings a year. The virtual things we are, the virtual meetings we're following that same schedule. Um, and we are holding it in the time zone of what would have been the country where it's held. So right now we're meeting as if we were all, what, Prague, I guess, which, um, but it's a reduced subset, reduced set of hours because nobody can really sit in front of a Zoom or video conference meeting for nine hours a day, right? So we only meet like five to seven hours, but it is held as if it were in Prague time. Um, the next one in November will be actually in the US. No, the next one in November is in Asia, right? Okay, so uh, there's 130 working groups, uh, some subset of them are meeting. There are birds of a feather session. These are the groups that people want to get together, the phrase birds of a feather flock together, to discuss if it makes sense to form a working group. And that will, they will meet once or twice beforehand. Um, and there's, I think, one or two BOFs scheduled. Uh, Karen mentioned the IRTF. Um, there are 15 groups, and I know a few of them are meeting in March. Um, the Human Rights Protocol Group, which is about privacy and human rights. The Crypto Research Group is there, which I'll be. Um, there are area-wide sessions. So of those seven areas you saw before, many of them have a session-wide meeting, such as um, the art area or, or the security area group will meet. Um, there's a plenary. Plenary is a Latin word that means all of us. <laughs> which I always find amusing. Um, and that's one meeting scheduled where the leadership gives an update. Um, the LLC people and the treasurer talk about, you know, how, how tough it is because we don't have any money from on in-person meetings and things like that. Um, invited lunch talks, usually the sponsor of the face-to-face -face meeting gets to have someone present a talk people can go to. Um, that's not happening uh, this time, obviously, because we have no lunch. A hackathon is an informal gathering. It's meeting the week before the IETF. Um, you can find list description of that on the IETF website. Um, if there's projects that are, people are working on that you are interested in, just sort of sign up. Uh, Code Sprint is where we work on the IETF tooling itself. Uh, the, the website, datatracker.ietf.org, some of the other tooling and so on. Uh, that happened last, that happened two days ago. Social events, obviously not happening. Uh, tutorials, the one, the only ones we're doing are the newcomers to try to get, uh, you know, people so they can hit the ground running as it were. Uh, there is a deep dive scheduled, right? Um, but I'm not sure that we don't, haven't announced the topic or who's speaking yet. Um, lunch sessions, obviously not happening. People just eat on your own. Uh, this time there, I don't believe there is a hot, and this is called request for conversation as opposed to request for comments. Um, when we meet face to face, you can sign up. It's usually run by a guy named Aaron Falk. Um, and you can sign up and say, I want, I'd like 10 minutes to present this. Um, and then other working groups, people from other working groups will be interested, or maybe that would lead to a boss saying, I think the ITF should discuss about this. There is a section for side meetings. Um, where, and there's a wiki sign up. if we'll just mention that in a bit. I know there's, I think one schedule so far. Um, and then open time, normally we sit around and have snacks and cookies or complain about how quickly the cookies all get eaten. Um, but during two of these open times, we'll have in March, um, newcomers, you know, chances to talk and have Q and A. Uh, next slide, please. Can I just inter interject for yeah. just a second? Uh, the deep dive is uh, DNS. It's going to be the team. It's DNS version. It's uh, part two. So there is a part one that we did, not the last meeting, but, but the meeting before. Uh, so it's like a two hour ish tutorial, uh, in-depth discussion of DNS. And they're doing a follow on for that. 
Um, and I it's scheduled sometime next week. It's scheduled the week of the hackathon. Oh, okay. Uh, so I just wanted to interject. Sorry. Uh, no, Rich. no, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a saying around, you know, in, in the ITF about, uh, oh, I can't seem to make this work. Oh, it can't be DNS. No, it's not DNS. Oh, it's always DNS. Oh, it's so it, the, it is the right. scapegoat of the ITF. Yeah, Anyhow. the other thing I would interject right here, uh, I know last time, like at, about this point, Rich and I said, there's no hot RFCs, lightning talks, and then it got scheduled at the very last minute. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if they're planning to schedule it again, but it's something that I would, especially as a newcomer, I would keep an eye out for because it's it's often like new ideas that people have. Um, and in short talks. And so it's people basically trying to find out who else in the IETF is interested in the same area that they're in. Um, and just because we tell you today it's not going to happen doesn't mean it's not actually going to happen. <laughs> so look for it. Good, good point. Um, OK, so um, we can skip the first three bullets there. Uh, we do have an app. Um, it gets updated with the schedule all the time. The picture here shows one of the hotel lobbies um, filled between meetings, or, or this is after the meetings and it's the hotel lobby bar, whatever, a lot of socializing, a lot of people talking, a lot of colleagues working. Um, the agenda listed on the bottom there um, is uh, useful. It changes up until, you know, it's, it's quote unquote, the final agenda right now, but it could be as recently as the day of somebody will have a last minute cancellation or something. Um, the app also useful. Uh, next slide. Sorry. <laughs> nope, no problem. Okay, so the ITF is all online. This is our third time, right, meeting. Um, we're getting much better at it. <laughs> um, the uh, two weeks beforehand have some activities. There's the hackathon. Um, it's several hours a day during the first week in March. Um, the newcomers overview, uh, obviously this, this is the second. Uh, the ask me anything, uh, the IETF has a, a gather.town space. Uh, it's being tweaked a little bit, but I always think of it as it's like uh, Animal Crossing. <laughs> you, people come in, you have, little, you have little avatars and you can you know, change what pants you have and shirt and so on. You walk around and you can talk to people. Um, it's kind of silly, but as the pandemic has been going on, it becomes more and more worthwhile just to chat with folks. Um, so is the kind of thing that there's an app that I need to get, or is there just a website, or how so do I find it? it? Yeah, well, there'll be a mail. Are you on the 110 attendees mailing list? Have you seen? Yeah. Okay. You'll get sent the link. Um, there's uh, just to avoid spam and harassment and so on. There is a, uh, there'll be a, a way to register and have a password, but it's just browser-based. You don't need okay. an app. Yeah, it's WebRTC based. Okay. And IETF technology. Um, <laughs> the, the most useful link here is the one on second to bottom there, uh, additional information on how to participate. Um, it talks about Meetecho, which I'll get to, and it has pointers to all the other things you need, but pretty much you can get by with just a browser um, by design. Okay, next. Uh, the main point I call it of the week is the working group sessions. Um, it's the biggest part. It still is the biggest part, even though it's virtual. We have multiple tracks, uh, sometimes as many as five, to seven meetings going on in the same time slot and you have to figure out which ones you want. Um, most of the work is done on mailing lists. Some groups use GitHub, um, but officially everything has to get approved and, and, and handled through the mailing list. Uh, the face-to-face -face meetings are mostly designed to, to, are mostly intended to address issues. So it's kind of weird. Um, so this is a on a picture from one of the recent face-to-face. -face. Um, somebody who has a, a, is the author of an internet draft that is being worked on in a working group will come to the mic and they'll present, here's the things I changed since the last version. So 
if you don't know what the draft is about, you're going to start right off lost. <laughs> um, so part of the prep is to figure out what working groups are of interest to you. Um, I have mention of what pages where you can find that. Um, and then sort of at least skim through the drafts to get ready so you know what's going to be discussed. And again, they, they stand up, they say, okay, this is what's changed since the last time. Here's the questions, here's the open issues I have. And then people, um, they would normally stand up at the mic line. And as you see the two people in the tan shirts there doing that, recognized by the chairs online or for the virtual meetings, there is going to be a mic line using the app we have, also browser-based. Um, and the chairs will recognize you and say so and so. There's a limit, time limit on discussion set by the chairs in their agenda. And they will say things like, okay, we're gonna cut the line now, meaning if you haven't already lined up or been recognized to speak, it's time to stop and we'll have to move on to the next thing. And so you follow up on the mailing list beforehand. All of our sessions are streamed. Well, obviously, because the virtual, <laughs> they're also recorded. So we have a ITF YouTube channel um, that has all of the meetings going back, you know, years. YouTube doesn't care, they, they make their own desks. Um, the charter for what a working group does, which includes milestones, which says, oh, by June, we will have this draft ready. And by August, we'll have that draft ready. Um, that is done in negotiation with the area director using you know, the hierarchy that uh, Karen mentioned earlier. Next slide, please. Birds of a feather, almost always it precedes the creation of a group. Uh, it's a chance to you know get together and discuss should we be doing this. Um, this is what Miria presenting. I forget which uh, what it was. Um, it's it's proposed by someone who people who are interested in the topic. The uh, the ads have to approve it. The overall IESG has to approve it. Uh, work a BOF will meet once, sometimes twice. Often there'll be a group formed if there seems to be enough interest. If there isn't, or we don't think it's going to be a practical thing. For example, there was a BOF about, uh, should we have a network based disc thing sort of to compete or to commodity, you know, make standards for, you know, Dropbox or Google Drive or Microsoft One Disk. Um, and everyone said, yeah, this is kind of useful, but you know, there's no way we're gonna get those people into the same room to uh, standardize on something. So we're not gonna form a group. Next slide, please. Uh, the IRTF groups are very similar. Um, it's officially an activity of the IAB, the parent organization of the IESG. Um, they meet at the ITF meetings. They're open, same as the ITF. There's a RFC that is a primer, primer for what the IRTF is like, if you don't know what the I, if you know about the ITF, it's really not very different. Um, the things that will be presented maybe are less progress reports and more discussion about things centered around the drafts that they have. Um, IRTF documents become, you know, start out as drafts and become research group documents, and then are published as IRTF RFCs, just like the IETF works. So it's sort of parallel, but a little more research. Next. Uh, okay, so there are ses area-wide sessions I mentioned, for example, the security group will, or, or the, um, the routing group will, or transport will say, okay, every, all the groups that met, give us a two sentence summary of what you met, what you discussed if you've already met. Um, Maybe there'll be a keynote speech from a security person or a routing person in that area. Um, here they tend, you know, or a discussion about what kind of new group should we be looking at? What, what happened with the, what's called a dispatch, which are groups formed in each area to help put documents in the right working group. Uh, the plenary, as I said, that's a, uh, <clears throat> a conference-wide meeting, nothing else is scheduled opposite it. Um, and that's where the leadership for the most part comes and talks. You can see in the lower right, um, the IESG open mic section where each of the eight area directors sits up there. And then the whole of the IETF, it probably gets 
you know, a few hundred people out of the 800 to 1,000 that attend um, can ask questions. Um, it always, it, it's worthwhile at least to check out some of the first couple and the first part where they talk about the logistics of here's the global distribution of where attendees are. Um, being all virtual, we see a lot less US bias than we have traditionally. Here's how many people are attending. Here's, you know, thanks to the Internet Society for a grant that funded us for this year, stuff like that. Um, this, <clears throat> pardon me, this meeting um, marks the peaceful transfer of power, to coin a phrase. Um, the technical leadership or a large portion of it is changing. So we'll have a new IE, IETF chair. I think about a third of the area directors will change over. And that starts at the end of the meeting, at the end of the, this, you know, the end of the week where we're meeting, but at the area wide, the plenary is where it'll stand up and be introduced. Um, it's already been announced on IETF announcement mailing lists, but this is where we would normally get a chance to see them, you know, for the first time face to face. Okay, next slide. The hackathon um, sponsored by Cisco sort of from the beginning. Um, I would just look at the hackathon space. It usually picks, groups pick a small, easily implementable and easily digestible part of an IETF spec and work to implement it and interoperate. Uh, Quick has done that. Um, People are now working on new kinds of DNS to maintain privacy. That's been done. done. Um, I don't know how it works, uh, how well it works virtually, but they seem to still be pretty successful. Uh, I usually stop in because I'm busy at the code sprint and it's usually Saturday, but now it's, as I said, stretched out over a week um, and a few hours a day. Next slide. Some details on the hackathons, you can, there's a link at the bottom. You can also find it on the how to participate section. Um, it's fun. It's, uh, you know, some people like folks from ARM bring, you know, special ARM chips or systems on a chip to, uh, to do um, TEEP, which is a protocol to um, manage applications running in the trust zone or SGX, the Intel's enclave. Um, and now it's meeting, as I said, the whole week before. Next. Uh, social events. Well, I'll just, uh, out of nostalgia. <laughs> the picture on the left is from the Singapore National Aquarium, uh, one night a week. So it's to, you know, what's your taste to, to, to come to the real event, to the face-to-face -face when we were able to do it again. Um, we were serving sushi in front of the fish tank, as I recall. Not really, that's a joke. Um, on the right-hand side is uh, the ITF Sisters organization. Um, anyone who, you know, presents as female can join. It's a support group, uh, social group. Um, they have a regular sponsored lunch all the time and uh, very useful. Uh, next, side meetings. Um, it's an experiment. The IESG is responsible for setting the overall schedule of the, of the ITF. So we periodically experiment in Argentina, for example, where they get up late and don't have dinner till 8 p.m. The meetings ran from like, you know, 10 to 7 p.m. or something like that. Um, the, um, in other countries, we, left all of the first, all in other meetings, we left the first hour free for un, unscheduled time and so on. So these are experiments that we keep, you know, playing with and trying, and there'll be surveys afterwards to say, well, how did you find this? Um, it's a lot less interesting to do these kind of experiments, obviously, when someone can just sort of close their laptop <laughs> and walk away, but, um, and there is the overall constraint that, you know, nine hours sitting in front of a screen is, you know, if you're not a kid watching cartoons, very few people can still do that. Uh, next. 
Uh, so the general meeting etiquette, um, the key thing is be informed and listen until you get informed. Um, is there are technical discussions, there are people who've been working together for a long time. Sometimes there's a, as the diplomatic phrases, a frank exchange of opinions, um, sometimes on the mailing list that bleeds out too. Um, but we still, you know, we want everyone to be respectful, tolerant toward everyone. Right now we're wrestling with how to become more inclusionary and, and diverse, um, which is bringing out the bad sides of some people and the good sides of others. Um, talk to and listen to, it's harder uh, in the, you can always pull someone aside for an, you know, an email or a chat. Um, there are text chat rooms open for every single working group as well as the mailing lists. Um, remember to sleep, you know, less important, as I said, virtual, uh, more important when you're meeting in a time zone that's 12 hours off from yours. Okay, next slide. Online version, uh, test your configuration. Um, the participant information we use, well, we'll get back to it. Uh, keep yourself muted, keep the video off, except when you're speaking, uh, the videos for bandwidth purposes. Uh, use a headset if you can, speak slowly, clearly. That's worth doing uh, anyway, because not everybody is a native English speaker. Technical comments and questions are always welcome. There's a Jabber channel. Jabber is the protocol for text messaging at the ITF. Fairly sure this was the ACME working group. Um, in the picture there. Uh, so, um, yeah, do we talk about Meet Echo? I think on the next slide, hopefully. Okay. So we use, uh, again, browser-based chat program and video program called Meet Echo. It's, it's are... later on is what I said. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, sorry. I thought you were saying no. Okay. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's later in the presentation. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Yeah, I, I should know. Um, how to bring new work together. I it may not matter that much. This is uh, right now. Um, <clears throat> every area has a group, has a working group designed to dispatch new drafts to either new working groups or to an AD to sponsor it or someone. Um, face to face, it's a lot easier because you can literally just grab people who seem interested in the topic that's of interest to you and talk to them. Um, there is a tutorial on how to do it. And there's a video of the tutorial. Um, yeah, next slide. Okay. I'll uh, mute and Karen can talk. Um. Um, okay, so at this point, let me just pause for a second. Do you have any questions? Because we've been just, we, we've done this a couple of times and we've been just sort of charging on through. I'm happy to keep charging, but I thought I would ask. I'm good, you can okay. go ahead. <laughs> um, we've never actually had only one person. So th this feels like a very uh, intimate version of the, <laughs> of the webinar. <laughs> was was um, there a crowd last time, the last? Pardon? Was there a crowd on Tuesday? It was a smaller than normal crowd. So maybe this meeting, everybody's, you know, maybe we don't, I don't know how many newcomers we have. So maybe we don't have as many newcomers or maybe uh, people are watching the online version and not coming to the live webinar. Uh, but you know, you never know. Maybe, maybe we picked bad times this, this time. So, uh, but it's, I mean, I think it's all good information and we're very happy to have you. <laughs> so. Uh, anyway, so the third part of, the, of this presentation is really about uh, all of the resources that make up the IETF. Um, so um, the first uh, is obviously IETF participants ourselves and, and sort of like in the, in the fashion of IETF of uh, the IETF, I'm gonna go bottom up. So um, the IETF participants are, are generally very passionate, smart, vocal people. Uh, sometimes uh, they're, they're very outspoken um, so technical excellence is, is very highly valued, but you kind of need to do your homework, but, but do speak up and, and do ask questions. And, and as Rich indicated, we're, we're uh, uh, trying to make, to set a better tone overall so that people feel comfortable contributing. Um, and basically once sometimes, 
sometimes even if you hit like a little road bump and if you actually get a chance to talk to the individual or work with people, uh, then uh, they're really great. They just tend to be like sometimes smart people are. They, they are not always. Uh, they're usually thinking about their technology and not necessarily how they're saying what they're saying. Um, we have an informal dress code um, when we meet in person and, and then obviously when we're on camera, we have an informal dress code as well. Um, and a lot of times you'll see people that are in the IETF and they've been working there for a number of years. And so they have a lot of close working relationships and you'll see uh, people move from one company to the next and they'll still be participating in the, in the IETF in their, in their new company and in their new role. Um, so uh, the next level up are the area directors and the working group chairs. So as I indicated, um, there is a, uh, every working group has two, maybe three working group chairs that manage that particular working group. Uh, there is a data tracker page that has uh, photos of meh, most of the, area of the working group um, chairs. Um, in a face-to-face -face meeting, that's really handy because you can go and look at the picture and then you know who you're looking for in the crowd of a thousand people. Um, a little less so now, but you know. Um, the area directors, as I indicated, each uh, set of working groups that are in an area has a set of area directors over it, usually two or three area directors for each area. Um, and they really are the primary managers of all the work in the IETF. So they, they do a lot of the, you know, shepherding documents through the, the publication process, reviewing the documents, setting, you know, technical policies and those kinds of things. Um, the general chair of the IETF, uh, it's currently Alyssa Cooper, uh, is the person who chairs the whole IETF and it's the general area director. So I mentioned that there was a general area and that the area director for the general area is the general chair of the IETF. Um, so as Rich indicated, we, we turn over a certain percentage of our leadership every year and we have a, a whole, uh, NOMCOM process of how we select our leadership. And so every March we have some turnover. Um, as it turns out this, this year, um, actually Alyssa Cooper is stepping down after four years of being the general chair. And, and a gentleman named Lars Eggert is, is coming in as the new general chair of the IETF. Uh, the other thing I wanted, we put a note down at the bottom of this, you know, if you have any concerns or any questions about how a working group is operating or behaviors of individuals in the working group, um, just like you would in, you know, your, your day job, um, you know, approach the leadership and, and ask them uh, to, you know, either the, you know, either the working group chairs or elevated area directors for assistance in those areas. Uh, they're, they are the first level of, of uh, support in addressing any issues that come up. Um, the next person I want to talk about is the IETF executive director. And this is uh, a gentleman named Jay Daly, who is uh, approaching maybe a year and a half or, or so of, I know he was hired right before we went into the, all of these virtual meetings. Um, I believe the last time we were in Singapore might've been his last um, 1.3333 years, according to Greg. <laughs> um, so, uh, so he is the basically the, the overall manager of the IETF. So he is the first employee of the IETF LLC. Um, and he uh, helps execute on the contracts and is the primary person responsible for managing all of this going forward. Um, and his boss, as it were, is the LLC. The IETF Secretariat, this is a, a group of individuals from a company called Association Management Solutions. Um, and they do all of the event planning and all of the uh, support between meetings. Uh, so they run a number of our services like the data tracker. Uh, they run the mailing list that the IETF uses. Uh, they set up virtual meetings. Uh, and so they are um, basically the, the organization that really does keep us coming along. Um, in a physical meeting, you would see them uh, in matching shirts and you'd see them at the registration desk. Um, at a virtual meeting, uh, you can find them online in the gather space. And so you can actually go in the gather and walk up to the virtual uh, registration desk and you'll find them there. Um, very important people to know because they actually know how everything works and can solve any of your problems. Um, I mentioned earlier the RFC editor and the IANA staff. Um, 
obviously the RFC editor staff are the ones that take the documents once they've been technically approved by the uh, IETF and they're passed off to the RFC editor and the RFC editor does all the work to actually get them published. So it does the final editing and, and all of that kind of thing. Um, at a normal physical meeting, there would be an RFC editor table there. So if you had any questions about a document that you were trying to get through the process, or if they needed to meet with you to try and resolve any last minute issues in editing, you could meet them at their table, have a couple extra pieces of candy and solve your problem. Uh, they will have a virtual table in the, uh, in, the meet, in the gather space. So you could walk up and talk to them about it as well. And they will post office hours. Um, and IANA does the same thing. So if you're working on a standards document and you're trying to set up a registry, you're trying to figure out what the rules for the registry should be, um, or you're trying to get anything resolved associated with numbers, um, then you can, uh, this is the, the IETF is a chance to, to meet with these people face-to-face -face and quickly get your issue resolved. They will also have a virtual table um, in the gather space. But, but sadly, they don't have the candy. No, they do. It's virtual candy, which is not nearly as satisfying. <laughs> That's what those little things were on their tables. Always yes, if you look closely, them. they're little pieces of candy. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, in particular, they used to bring uh, Tootsie Rolls, which were my personal favorite. And so every day, you know, that mid-afternoon when you really need just a tiny bit of sugar, you just wander by there and pick up a Tootsie Roll. But anyway, um, the Ombuds team, um, uh, the, the IETF is very serious about having uh, that, that our participants not engage in any forms of harassment while at meetings, uh, in virtual meetings as well, or in any social events or on the mailing list. Um, and so any um, harassment is reported to the ombuds team and there's an RFC that documents what the anti-harassment policy is. Uh, these are members of the IETF who um, have agreed to sign up for this role. Um, and if there's any issues, you can speak to any of them. Um, all very approachable, all very nice people. Um, newcomer resources, we've talked a little bit about some of these, but there's the Tau of the IETF, which is basically a novice's guide to the IETF. Uh, it's been updated fairly recently. Um, it's, it's a living document now on a web page. Uh, and uh, we have a newcomers page for IETF 110, which lists all the information that's related to uh, the newcomers activities. We do have a link about tutorials. These are, are some, some of the more recent uh, quality tutorials that have been done, uh, nothing specific to this meeting. Um, I'm pretty sure that, um, like I know we did one on service discovery a little while ago, I'm pretty sure that one's linked up there, um, things like that. There is a first, -timers, uh, first time attendees mailing list. Actually, I think it's not actually first time attendees, I think it's newcomers, which is five meetings or less. Um, but that's a detail, I suppose. Uh, but that's a mailing list specifically targeted at newcomers. Um, there is a, also a sister's mailing list. Uh, Rich pointed out the sister's social earlier, which is it, it's just a very informal group of women. There's a mailing list and we meet for lunch sometimes uh, in a physical meeting. Uh, we tried to have a virtual meetup last time. You know, a few of us stood around and talked in the gather space and mostly visited with each other. Um, so this is a blog post and that blog post points you to the mailing list um, and, and you can get the information about sisters there. Um, there is a uh, IETF mail meeting mailing list page here that gives you a lot of information about mailing lists related to meetings. Any meeting issues that you have, uh, if you go to this link here, that would, you know, if you uh, have any technology issues or things like that, um, in, in, a, in a physical meeting, you might do things like complain that the room is too cold. Uh, in a virtual meeting, if the room is too cold, then I think that's, that's your problem and not theirs. Um, and we do have this one-stop shop for all links. And this is just a, a collection of a whole bunch of links that people use on a fairly regular basis. Um, I don't know if this is completely true for everybody, but I find like the website is a good place for like meeting related information um, and uh, Tool related information and the data tracker is the is where a bulk of the actual documents are and so the, the working group documents and uh, all of those kinds of things are in data tracker uh, all of the proceedings from the, the meetings those kinds of things speaking of which um so 
the probably in my mind, the single most important link is the data tracker link, uh, because that's where you find uh, all of the work related to a working group. So if you go up and you select a working group, um, so like this one is the, the TLS, uh, TLS working group, and you can see a set of tabs now you like about and documents and meetings and history. So documents is all of the uh, documents associated with the working group that are not expired. So anything that's been published or that's currently in draft form, and it could be both documents that are adopted by the working group and also documents that have been submitted to the working group but have not been adopted yet. Um, if you go to the meetings tab, uh, you'll see like the agenda for the meeting that we're at, and then you'll see all of the previous meetings um, and it, the virtual, you know, the virtual interim meetings, as well as, you know, the regular full IETF meetings. The tools page is, um, the tools started out as are a lot of the tools now, it's, it's almost like an experimental place for the new tools that we're developing that get moved into data tracker. Uh, it has, uh, all of the same information organized in a slightly different way. Um, and, it, and it sometimes has experimental things that haven't been deployed in the operational system yet. Um, Meet Echo. So we, we, we mentioned this a little bit earlier. So Meet Echo is the tool that we were originally using to support remote participation at face-to-face -face meetings. And so this was how people were participating remotely. So it was originally developed for that. And then when we um, moved to an all online version of it, it became that it's basically the IETF custom tool for doing that. So it's, it's um, again, it's WebRTC based. So all you really need is a browser. Um, I will have to say I've had more luck and I don't know if it's the way my Safari and, and Firefox are, are configured, but I have found it a little bit more. I think I don't customize my Chrome installation as much as I do my Firefox. You know, I said all sorts of special you know, don't track, don't do this, don't do that on Firefox. And, and, and Chrome is the one that I use for um, letting it be. <laughs> so um, it is uh, built to, to emulate the way we normally do meetings. And so it has a queue that you get in. Um, it has the Jabber, the chat built into it. Um, and it, it has a lot of the same capabilities that uh, like, you know, Zoom or any other web conferencing system would have, but it, it is customized specifically for the way we run meetings. Um, it's really not that hard to use, um, but I highly, highly recommend uh, testing it in advance. And uh, there's a session participant guide. Um, and there will be some testing sessions done. Um, I know they've been published. Um, I'm pretty sure they're on the newcomers page. And if not, they're gonna be on a meetings page somewhere. Um, so I think there's a couple of testing sessions next week. And uh, then there's this participant guide. Um, so it, it, it's really not that hard to use, but it doesn't hurt to get it figured out before you actually try to participate in the meeting. And uh, these are the gentlemen who, uh, who designed Meet Echo and at a normal face-to-face -face meeting, they would be there to support it. Um, this is Gather. We've been talking a fair bit about it. It's, um, it's a virtual space. Um, it's basically the, for our hallway track. Um, so it, you do have, and you can see in the picture in the left, you can see like the little tables across the top. The first one is the NOC, which will have technical support there. Uh, the next one is IANA, um, and that's where the IANA folks will be. And then the third one, and they may have rearranged this slightly, I don't know, but just if you go into the main lobby area, you can find these tables. The third one is the RFC editor uh, table. And then in the center here, you see um, what looks like it might be a virtual registration desk, and that's where the secretariat staff will be. So if you have any questions related to your meeting problems or whatever, you can go right there. And it's a tool where basically if you get in close proximity to somebody, uh, it'll turn on your audio and your video, and so you can have a conversation with them. How am I doing on time? Boy, I'm taking up too much time. <laughs> um, and then when you walk away, it, it's, it's, it's very much like you'd be walking around in a, in a physical space. You get close to somebody and you can see them and hear them and talk to them and then you can walk away. And then there's a whole bunch of other parameters um, for how you can customize that. It, it seemed a little bit odd to me at first, but you know, 
the longer we go and not actually seeing any of our friends, the, the more we seem to be willing to wander around virtual spaces and talk to them. Uh, Jabber XMPP is the, the uh, protocol that we use for chat. Uh, and it is built into Meet Echo. Um, if you're trying to use it external to Meet Echo, there's some links that provide you some information. Um, there's also an email that has gone out about a couple of uh, experimental chat technologies we're trying this time. If that's the kind of thing that you're interested in uh, and you want to try some of those other experiments. Um, I know that uh, Robert Sparks just sent an email to the 110 um, attendees mailing list, um, and that would be a place you could try for that. Above all, uh, enjoy. Um, I, I think it's a great community. I think we're doing important work, and we're really excited to have newcomers come. Um, if we missed anything, uh, if you could please help us by filling in our survey, that would be great. Uh, and I'm supposed to have put this link in the chat. So let me put that in the chat now. Uh, everyone. Oh, that didn't work very well. Eh, it's not pasting for some reason. In any event. <laughs> um, so for the meet echo testing things, um, do you know when those are supposed to be and what link we're supposed to be joining? Um, I can tell you that in a moment. Um, let's see. Well, she's looking up, I'll mention it's, if you're not sharing a meeting or you're not presenting at it, it's not too much different than Zoom, except right. I'm, I'm down the side. Ah, so I, okay. I'm giving a presentation, so I um, wanted to make sure that the screen sharing and everything is working beforehand. Excellent. Um, um, well, you know, the really exciting thing that I just see is that the testing sessions are the 25th and the 26th, which means you've already missed one of them. Wonderful. But the second one is tomorrow. <laughs> Um, so that is the testing sessions. This is the page I think you really want to focus on. Um, okay. And uh, let's see. Um, um, in, in addition, the, the rooms open up five or 10 minutes before the meeting. Um, the usual, oh, I can't get my stuff to work. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Um, and you can always uh, email um, folks that are listed on the, the participant guide and say, hey, you know, they'll keep a private, they'll keep a temporary room, a temporary meet echo session up for the whole week, I believe. So, okay. Yeah, so, I, I believe they did it. I know they did it for working group chairs last time. I'm pretty sure that they, you know, if, if you if you wanted to double check and practice, I'm sure they would be happy for you to, they, they provided a pretty big set of times that we could meet. Um, they, they've done a, a video. Um, what are you working uh, so, on, Audrey? Um, DNS, broadly speaking, <laughs> DNS and privacy and security and, um, there was an award that we won. There were like six people who got to come to the IETF and give a talk on our work. So. Oh, great. Oh, is that the ANRP? Yeah. yeah you know yeah. what, Rich? I just realized we didn't even mention the ANRP this time. Normally we talk about it. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, congratulations. Thank yeah. you. That's impressive. Good work. Yeah. Did you, um, the, uh, you weren't part of the DNS privacy workshop that was last Sunday, were you? No. Okay. Didn't know it was happening. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a academic workshop associated with um, NDSS, and it was just last I just last Sunday. So. Oh, NDSS, yeah. right? Yeah. So, where are you from? Colorado originally, but I'm in California right now. Oh, okay. Oh, excellent. Well, I, I don't know that winning a prize to come to the IETF is quite as much fun if it's virtual, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so you'll be presenting at the IRTF meeting. Um, yeah. And 
Colin, who is current head of the IRTF, becomes the new IETF chair. Mm. No, I got that back. Not Colin. No. Lars is the new. Lars. Yes. Yeah. Lars yeah. was the IRTF chair until four or five yeah. years ago. I know. I'm it it all blurs together, doesn't it? <laughs> it does indeed. Um, so. All right. I'm going to stop the recording now. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. yeah probably should have said that earlier. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any other questions, Audrey?